We have in Arizona, Noah says you're a former Mormon being attacked by the LDS, uh, called and harassed. What can you do? Yeah. Um, can you hear me good? We can. And you picked a perfect oh, week perfect. to call in because if anybody's going to have advice on how to deal with uh, potential religious harassment, it's my guest, Andrew. Well, I, uh, I mean, uh, no offense, Andrew. I, I haven't <laughs> heard about you. Um, oh, I, I, I don't know if I can not take offense at that. I'm very well known. And, and I've not, been not a yet. Mormon for as long as I remember. But, um, yeah, so um, nice to meet you, Matt. Nice to meet you, Andrew. Pleasure. You too. I, um, my bishop called me in, you know, after, uh, oh, shoot. I, I hate this part because I feel like I'm in front of a celebrity and I don't know what to say. There are no celebrities um, here. There may be some, actually, there are some watching. I know that for, for sure. <laughs> But yeah, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I called into the atheist experience a while ago, mm -hmm. and uh, because my employee uh, bet me, and if I lost, he was said I had to call into the show because <laughs> um, I guess there's not that many Mormon callers, and I did, and I spoke to Tracy and Phil, mm -hmm. and I kind of made myself look like a, a jet, well, like an like an idiot. And um, since then, I've been listening to the show nonstop in my headphones. I carpet clean all day. I own a carpet cleaning company, so that's what I do. Um, and so obviously, after listening to all this reason, after listening to Matt quite a bit um, and everybody on the show and thinking really about my place in life, I you know, kind of turned away from it. Uh, or not kind of, I absolutely don't believe in it. Um, and, and, and what's so, been the, what's been the impact of that both free before we get into the, the, the people who are potentially attacking you for no longer holding those beliefs apart from those issues, what has been the impact on your life since you essentially changed your views on, on Mormonism? Well, um, you know, the impact on my life personally is, was at first sort of a, like a, like you got punched in the gut yeah. and you didn't know what to do, you know, like your stomach's eating itself. And what do you do? Cause you talk to these people, they send you messages and they stop by bringing you cookies and you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you, you just kind of feel like you're a faker. And that's what I did. <laughs> I did that for about a month. Um, and then I just felt disgusted with myself. I really blamed myself. I did. Why? And I felt like, uh, because I felt like I'd been duped and, and I was stupid. But I, yeah, I watched, yeah, but so. So Noah, the fact that someone has been duped doesn't mean that that was a failure on their part. All of us have been duped about something at some point. Uh, you know, there's the, the old quote, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me <laughs> twice, shame on me. Now, yeah, now that Bush butchered it, I can't get it right most of the time either. And and so, <laughs> so first of all, d don't beat yourself up because you were convinced of something that the overwhelming majority of people on the planet were convinced of. Uh, and you were, you were put, you were in an environment where you didn't have the desire or ability or encouragement to question. And as far as I'm concerned, when you lost that bet and you called in and you feel like you made yourself look like an idiot, which happens to all of us and happens to callers on the show frequently, you took that on board and thought about it and continued to listen and explore. And then for, for what, some reason, I don't, I don't know what it, if, was there one thing that changed your mind or was this, a, you know, an accumulation of things where you just kind of reached a tipping point, but, but either one, you changed your mind. I, that's nothing I could ever beat anybody yeah. up over. And it's not, it's not stupidity. That, I mean, that's courage. Yeah. Ha having the courage to, to follow that thought process. To say everybody around questions. me believes this and yeah. I don't anymore. Yeah. That is brave. That's absolutely bravery. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, it's, it, I did feel stupid at first, but I, like uh, Matt, when you, when, uh, the one episode that kind of stands out to me, I've watched it or listened to it a lot. Was uh, I, I hate to bring it up to you, but uh, when the 
your your folks wrote you that letter. Yeah, and you can bring it up. I, of, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I know, but uh, I, you know, I just kind of it, it hit home to me. It really made me think, and it really made me, you know, think about because what I do, what do I do with my family? What do I do with my own children? Yeah. You know, that are heavily involved with this whole community. I mean, heavily involved. So, because um, because I have four kids that are just they do this every day. And so I just kind of, I struggled a lot with it. So, so what and difficulty, what so, difficulty are you having now with, I mean, where, where's the harassment coming from? Can you describe that? Maybe uh, Andrew might have some thoughts about it. Well, my, my bishop called me in um, and. First of uh, all, he's not your bishop anymore. Yeah, your former. Right. Yeah. yeah. I have to, I have to. So this one guy called me in <laughs> and uh, he started talking to me. And, you know, the funny thing is he starts talking to me about it. And I've known this guy for years and years. I really have. And I've worked with him personally. I had a pretty high position in my ward. And I gave it up, obviously. Um, and he starts talking to me about the adversary and what, what happens and yada, yada. And he starts reading scriptures to me. And I'm just looking at him like, you know, you're, you're saying all the wrong things. And it's clear to me, he doesn't have any kind of, um, any kind of way to convince me that what he's talking about is true. And what I'm thinking in my mind is true, right? That he cannot, he cannot coincide those. He can't correlate it. He can't uh, figure out what to say to me at all. Yeah. I've read books since I started uh, calling the show, like, uh, I, I don't need to go into it, but uh, Richard Dawkins' books, I've read three of his books now, and um, Christopher Hitchens, one of his books, which, I, and I'll read that book too, uh, I'll read Andrew's book. Also. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go out and buy it, you know, um, but... Actually, actually, so, somebody bought my copy today, so when we're done talking... If I put you on hold, if you give your name and address to the call screener, I'll buy your copy. Yeah. And I'll sign it. And we'll, okay. We'll send it copy that. Uh, I, will, I would love to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so the bishop is talking to me about this, and I tell him how I really feel. I just, just spill my guts. Mm -hmm. That was a big mistake because... I should have been, hey, you don't think so, I'll, I'll let you know, I appreciate you, I'm going to go home now and enjoy my life. And I spill my guts, I tell him how I feel, I tell him how this doesn't make any sense, there's no reason to it. Um, I'm not even going to bring up the things about the church to him, because of Joseph Smith. I'm, I'm not going to talk about that mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. um, but this, just none of this makes sense, uh, how the universe works, and what you guys are trying to do to my life. You're trying to get 10% of my money. You're trying to uh, manipulate my life. I, I don't know. It's for some reason in my gut, I'm feeling bad about what I'm saying right now. But um, um, you've, been, so, you've been taught to feel bad about it your whole life, I presume. And that, that's part of why. Yeah. yeah if you've been taught so that, that like, something or someone is above questioning or challenging, then the moment you start doing it, that guilt... Uh, is something that was basically pushed on you. And it's not anything that's deserved. It's not reasonable. And I know that, you know, I could just say, ah, just ignore that, you know, set it aside. I know that's not easy. But coming to the recognition that this, that the feelings you're feeling about questioning your former religion uh, are the self-protective mechanisms of that religion. It's the thing that keeps people believing and it's the thing that keeps people from openly questioning and having those conversations. Uh, that stuff might stick with you for, for a while, even if you recognize it in an intellectual level. Recognizing something in your head doesn't change things. Uh, doesn't change feelings. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can feel strongly about something and be in the midst of a panic attack about uh, a particular issue, and my head goes, well, this is, there's no reason for you to be concerned about this. You can't do anything about it. You don't know. You're in this, and, and that's the frustration. And in your case, this is something that was largely done to you. Right. It was. I mean, heavily. And I was a part of it. 
and and since then, the bish, uh, the, that guy, um, he's called everybody and had everybody call me and try to pray for me and try to invite me to things and try to see once you go through the temple in the Mormon church, once you do that, you're a full fledged member. Like you, you turn away, you're just scum, you're a pig. Yeah. And, um, that, that's the, the, like people won't say that, but really that's how it is in the church. Oh, pe people and, will say yeah, that. They, yeah. I, at least they'll say it to us. And, and I mean, I think what you're, you're what you're experiencing is what happens to all ex Mormons. I mean, th th this is a playbook that they are operating out of. You're certainly not the first person to go through it. You're not going to be the last. Uh, and I mean, I don't know how bad the the harassment is is getting right now, uh, but I do know that it it does tend to ratchet up. Uh, and I, I don't. I, I wish I could remember the name of this group right now. There is a there is a group that helps ex Mormons. Stop. Are they the rest. Foremans? I, I, don't, I can't remember. No, I've, a, I've researched a lot of that. For, former um, Mormons, there was a Foreman thing? And they, yeah, well, and they, yeah, but they also, was, they uh, have the letter that you can compose that you can send to the bishop, and then there are actually attorneys who will help you if they continue to, to put pressure on you or harass you, uh, and, you, you know, you can get restraining orders and things like that, which are not as serious as, as that sounds. Uh, and right. you're going to you're gonna email into the show, so I, I will find that information absolutely, and I will make sure that it's in your hands uh, before the week is out so that you, you can get help doing that. I mean, I... It, We've seen this time and time again, and it it does tend to ratchet up. That's only though the, the sort of the legal side of the pressure and the the church side of the pressure. It's going to be much harder to extricate yourself from some of those other relationships. And I don't want to weigh in on on what to do with your kids and stuff. That's that's just incredibly hard, and I sympathize with you. Yeah, I mean, there's a temptation to say, well, if they're just calling you, stop answering. But when you do answer. You're the one that's being the bigger person here because they're essentially targeting you because you no longer share their beliefs. And, and when it reaches a point where they become convinced that you're not going to change your mind and rejoin the church, um, that that starts the, the shunning and the ostracizing. And you could find yourself separated from, you know, family members and friends and everything else. And so maintaining contact and at least being willing to have a conversation might be the best course of action to to potentially smooth out some of those things that might be coming down the road. But it's also worth remembering this. You don't owe anybody shit. You don't owe anybody an explanation for who you are, what you believe, anything else. And if people truly care about you, they care about you and who you are, not you and who they want you to be. And so you get to draw boundaries in your life. It, it, this happens all the time in a number of different arenas, especially, um, you know, people who come out of the closet as homosexual to family members. There's been recommend, recommendations that you give the people you care about one year to ask all the stupid, shitty questions <laughs> and be obnoxious and then draw the line in the sand and say, no, we've been down that road. You're either with me and accept me or I have, I, you know, I don't need toxic influences in my life. Mm -hmm. You've got you've got a, a long and and troubling road ahead. Um, how are how are your kids taking this? Um, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna. Um, I really appreciate you saying that. It, it, this has been very difficult for me. <laughs> um, my uh, my kids are. Um, they really trust me. Um, they really listen to me. I I haven't um, hit, hidden my kids from anything. Um, I've I've I grew up. You know, my my father is a he's an atheist, um, which this has helped me connect with him. But um, so I grew up watching Carl Sagan. I grew up um, with all that, and so this has helped me. Um, communicate with my children but they they trust me they they really do so and and i assume that your your I, kids were already familiar with the fact that your father was an atheist yeah they so, were so and, when you were still a believer um, i i sorry i i'm this is, yeah, this is I, i'm so intensely curious when no, you were still a believer and you had kids um and they knew that their grandfather was an atheist how did you talk about atheism the, their grandfather's atheism with your kids um, 
Believe it or not, I, uh, in some respects, uh, shunned him in a way to my children. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, I'm not proud of that. Uh, But in other respects, I have put my children around him as much as I could. Sure. And um, because I do trust my father. I love my father. My father, he works in the Pentagon. He's a software engineer. And um, he's a very intelligent person. Um, so it, it's a, kind of a thing where, you know, this is what we believe, that's what he believes. And I kind of put it at that. Yeah. And so, you know, my kids come home. I talk to them about what we believe and, you know, it's what Grandpa believes and that's, that's that. And so that, that's a, been a pretty difficult thing to deal with talking to my children. My daughter was uh, kind of upset about it because she has a lot of friends in the church. I mean, obviously not a lot. All of her friends are in the church. And that's the way I was when I was 17. Yeah. Yeah. I was so she mentions what she thinks uh, they're going to just, you know, say get lost and it's not fair to her. Uh, just because I'm giving this up. So, you know, you can't imagine that the, 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 well, you, I'm sure you, I'm sure you can, but uh, the, I've gone through a lot of like turmoil in my heart about this. Like, well, what do I do? What do I say? And, and what do I say for them to say? Because they're listening to me because I'm some patriarch in their family and I'm guiding them and, uh, leading them down this righteous path. Uh, you see, and, I look at this, and, and so, yeah, you're you're in this position. I, I can, t- first of all, I'm happy that it's helped you reconnect with your father. Um, that's nice. Yeah, one, yeah. one of the other things is that if you've always been straightforward and honest with your kids and your kids still respect you, um, it's a, probably a good idea for them to see, hang on, Dad can change his mind on something. Dad can potentially be wrong. Whether they think you were wrong before or wrong now, they can at least understand that you can be wrong and you can still be the person that they care about and love and you can still be a person who's valuable in their life. That might make, even if there's going to be difficulties with other members of the church and you know, terrible things where, you know, if your, your daughter's friends are at church and they end up shunning her because of you, um, you might be put in a position very quickly where you, you are spending less time focusing on how this is impacting you and just providing your daughter with the love and support and guidance uh, where the two of you can connect on the fact that you're being shunned for nothing. Nothing more than being intellectually honest. You know, hey, I'm not convinced of this. And people are saying that essentially, on some level, you are a fundamentally terrible person or not worth associating with merely because you no longer believe something. And every time they go down that path, they're not presenting an argument for their religion. They are demonstrating how messed up their religious view is. Whether or not it's true, whether or not they're gonna, you know, get their own planet uh, after they die and uh, and all the other things. (laughs) Uh, they're showing that their religion isn't about love and doesn't care about truth and cannot provide evidence for its veracity and instead is about trying to manipulate people and shun people and abuse people. That is important to make sure everybody recognizes because I, I, I challenge anybody to find a secular humanist ever in the history of the world following the guidelines of secular humanism that decided, you know what, we're going to shun people and ostracize <laughs> people and we're going to say they're terrible. You know, I mean, okay, granted, I'll have to retract that because people on all sides of everything are prone to saying the other people on the other side are terrible. Yeah. But it's usually on the merits, I think, for yeah. our Yeah, yeah. As, <laughs> as opposed to, you that know, person hey, is terrible. I'm not going to argue it. I tell you what I'm going to do. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on hold so they can get your, your contact information and we'll get you a copy of Andrew's book, but I also want to recommend that you reach out to uh, Recovering from Religion, which is, uh, mm-hmm. I, I know there's plenty of people involved there. We've had Daryl Ray on the show recently. And also the ACA Discord, which they had a link up to earlier, tiny, tiny.cc slash ACA Discord. And I think that being truthful with your children, just to build real quick, is gonna, it's just going to highlight the, the lies of the Mormon church. I yeah. really do. I think that, and I think that's the way to go. Yeah. It's, 
you know, I find honest. I, I find honesty is almost always going to be the right thing to do. Very rarely. Yeah, it's. I mean, I had a disagreement with with Sam Harris because he, he wrote a book about uh, lying, where he basically argued we should never lie under any circumstances, not even when the the Nazis are at the door and and uh, and Frank's in the attic type of thing. And I'm like, woo. Um, yeah, I definitely lie then. I think I definitely <laughs> lie there. And there are other situations where I might lie. Um, but right. they're extremely rare, and I find that if you really want people to value you for who you are, then they have to know who you are. And if you're pretending to be somebody else uh, and not being open about it, then they like the person you're pretending to be. And a long time ago, I, I decided, you know, people are going to like me for who I am, <laughs> and people are going to hate me for who I am, and uh, I'll hang out with the ones that like me. Yeah, that's, that's the only and way to I'll, do it. And I'll, you know, argue with the ones that hate me until they like me. And then sometimes I'll, I'll get in arguments with the ones that like me until they hate me. That's the way life goes. <laughs> but on, on that note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you, I'm gonna put you on hold, Noah, and we're going to try to get some other callers because we're on tight time constraints this week. But I, I really want to thank you for calling thank in. You. I'm sorry you're going through much, but I can tell just from the fact that you, you changed your mind, you called in, you have concerns about how, how your family and friends are going to view you, you are taking the calls and, and letting them engage with you. I'm fairly confident that you're going to be okay. It's just going to be rough for quite a while. And definitely reach out to Recovering from Religion. And there's, there's a community at the ACA Discord and other places like that that people can point you to. And we'll see if we can look up some, some resources on Ex-Mormon if you don't already have them. I appreciate you. Thanks so much, man. Thanks.